Um, on this lovely positive note, I would like to introduce Kevin Cripps, uh, amazing author and poet. <laughs> Kevin, please, um, <laughs> let's start with the introduction. No, no problem at all. Thank you very much, Anna. My name is Kevin Crooks. I live in the United Kingdom. I live in a place called Southampton, which is in the south of the United Kingdom. London's not very far away. Um, the most famous thing about Southampton is there was a big ship called the Titanic back in 1916 that left Southampton on its way to New York, hit an iceberg and sank. So that's what makes Southampton um, very, that's our focal point. The best thing about living in the South and in Southampton is we've got the beaches and the sand and the nice weather. London's not very far away. Um, London's there, it's about 70 miles, takes me about three quarters of an hour. And that's where the Queen of England lives. This is Buckingham Palace. Yeah, and the Queen lives in this big palace. She also has another big palace, a stately home she lives in. And you can tell when the Queen's at home because there will be a flag on the flagpole. She has um, her own guards to guard her and soldiers and they stand either side of the door, yeah? I've done lots of lots of sessions to loads of lovely teachers, lovely children all over the world. Yeah, I've accumulated over 300,000 virtual thousand miles. So I've been around the, the globe three times talking to children everywhere. I just wanted to show you some pictures just to prove that what I say is what happened. These are some lovely children in Florida, America. Um, some lovely children from Brazil. Yeah, that was in 2018. These are some really, this, this is one of the biggest, but youngest classes. This is in America, in America again. Um, the, this is the oldest class that I've ever spoken to. And I always thought that my writing and my books was very relative to younger children, but these, these students absolutely loved what I was saying about my writing. There's a game that we play, I'll show you later in one of my books. And these are in Brazil and these were 16 to 18 year olds and we had such a fun session. It was really good, really enjoyed it. I love all my sessions talking to children from all over the world, all different ages. This is one of my last sessions, not a brilliant picture, but this was in Nigeria. I've never done Nigeria before. I, I, I get around, I do the big countries, America, Canada, um, Brazil, India, um, Russia. There's just one more, that's what I like to finish. I always like to finish with a, with a lovely little heart just to say thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me, you know, and I hope you enjoy my sessions. So let's talk about my writing. How did I start writing? Well, as I said, I live in South, Southampton near the beaches. I was walking along the, uh, the boardwalk promenade beach and I just started chanting off all these different rhymes and my friends that were with me couldn't believe it. And they said, you should write things down. So when we got home, I started writing I, and I wrote my first little rhyme, turned into a poem and one led to another. And today I've probably written three, maybe 500 poems I haven't published them all, but then I moved on and I, I thought, well, why not have a go at writing your own book? So I wrote this book, As It Is, and they're just, it's called As It Is because it's about just general things, you know, um, garden, daddy, you know, catching a plane, just general things in, in life. And they go, they're trying not to get a reflection. There's a picture of me and a little bit about me. So this was my first ever book and it had 50 poems. And because I enjoyed writing, I'd found this, this talent that I didn't know I had. I mean, I've been writing now 10 years. So go back 10 years, I'm not gonna say how old I am, but I really started writing quite late in life. So I started, because that first book was As It Is, I wrote Still As It Is, this got 100 poems in. I used the same picture and the same text just so that people still knew it was me. 
Now, I have a love and it's animals and I really like writing about animals. And I wrote this poem called Harry the Hedgehog. My friend, um, Derek, who's Polish, he read it and he loved it so much. He said, you need to make that into a book. So I quickly did a Google, Harry the Hedgehog. There were hundreds of Harry the Hedgehog books. So a piece of advice, I spent four or five hours Jungle, jubbling up different, messing around with different letters until I came up with a unique word that did not Google. The reason why this is so important is if you write a book, a poem or anything, if someone searches for it on the internet, they're not going to search for a hundred pages looking for your work. If your work comes up on the first page, yeah, and I will prove that I can prove this because this the name I came up with works. If your unique name comes up on the first page or within the first two pages, people will stop and read it. If your name, Harry the Hedgehog, there was 100,000 Harry the Hedgehogs. But I came up with the unique name of Huxton. I wow. took the H and I wanted to use alliteration. so. H for hedgehog. I jumbled around, messed around with words for four or five hours until I pull it into Google and it came up with Huxton, don't you mean this? So that is unique. So when anyone searches for the word Huxton, my book comes up on the first page. Yes, yeah? I, I, I've, I've done it. <laughs> yes, That's true. Yes. Moving on from that, that was my first book. I love, like I said, I love animals and I love hedgehogs. So I wrote this book and it's about a little hedgehog called Huxton who comes out at night, meets, meets his friend an owl, Othena and Theo the fox girl. Wow. Yeah. So this, this was my first book. Um, unfortunately, you can't buy this book because the publishing company went broke or just stopped. There's only a hundred copies of this book and they sell for $900 a copy. So they're, they're very rare, but I absolutely yeah. love hedgehogs and I love reading this book. I love reading it to children. So one of the biggest problems I've come across is finding an illustrator. You need to find an illustrator that is going to represent your work yes. to the best that they can. So how did, Huxton, how did I like that illustration? This is the first ever proof of Huxton. That's what I was shown. And I absolutely thought it was amazing. So I chose this illustrator. And these, these are his friends. Athena's not blue, she, she's um, a proper color. But you, you have to make sure that an illustrator, their illustrations suit your work. That's an important thing to know about writing. So anyway, that was my first book, Huxton the Hedgehog. Now that lovely picture of me in a uh, bow tie and uh, a tuxedo, I um, won the People's uh, Book Prize Award for my next book, Mio the Meerkat, using alliteration again, M for meerkat, yeah? Love meerkats. Love hedgehogs, love meerkats, think they're so cute, they're little paws, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, remember I told you about these 18 to 19 year olds? Uh, yeah. 16, yeah. I know and this the game, classroom. They're amazing. The, the game we played. Now, this is another little unique feature about this book. On every single page, you have to find the monkey. Now, I played this game with children all over the world of all different ages, and I absolutely love it. I won't do the whole yeah. book, but I'll do a few. So I always said, well, where's the monkey? And no one can ever find it until I pull my hand to one side. There's the monkey. Uh -huh. Yeah. And as yeah. we go on through the book, I hold the book back like this, and I zoom in until the children can find the monkey. And there's a monkey on every single page. Some are easier to find, some are harder to find. Also, my books are um, 
intuitive as well. With Huxton, it explains that hedgehogs come up out at night. With Mio, it explains about all his predators and how he lives his lifestyle in, in, the, um, in the desert where he lives. Also get um, children to, we've got silhouettes, so they point out, they look for the monkey, scream at me, they do. And I also get asked them what they think of what the other animals are. I particularly like listening to children all over the world when I do this page. Because some people call it, some children call it a, a wolf, a fox, you know, loads of, a coyote, loads of different names. And the children from different countries have different names for animals and it's taught me something. So I learn as well. So that was Mio. Now my latest book, I love sloths as well. Sloth, you know, a real slow sloth. They just so, you know, they just lull about, they never rush. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a life like a sloth? So yeah, again, using alliteration, so it's easy for children to understand, Snoff the sloth. Yeah, as I said before, on Google, jumbled about some letters, came up with snoff, and that comes up on hope still on the first page. The problem, the mistake I made, yeah? Hands up in the air, I made a mistake. <laughs> in this book, you have to find an ant on every single page, yeah? Now, what I said to the fantastic illustrator was, make them small so they're hard to find. Unfortunately, made them too small, <laughs> yeah? And they're extremely difficult, difficult <laughs> to find. There's one up there. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, yeah, oh, I can see. Yeah, they are so hard to find. There, there's three quite easy ones. Yeah, that's as that's you a go through phrase. the book, they they are really difficult to find. My children tell me there's seventy five ants to be found in this book, and I've never found all of them. Every time I look at, wow, so, that's amazing. But like I say, it's a feature because when 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 I write these books, um, I want the children to be entertained. I want. I've proved that 16 to 18 year olds can be entertained. They're doing something as well as looking at the lovely, with animals, you can use lovely bright colors. And for younger children, they really relate to lovely bright colors. And I love writing about animals. So that's how, where I've ended up. Um, where am I today with my writing? Where am I today with my writing? I am wor working with a school in America called Southside Elementary School, and I am doing an A to Z of animals. So I get to write about every animal from A to Z. And today I'm up to Q, and I'm struggling a bit with Q because there's not a lot of animals that begin with Q, but there's a, a little bird called a quail. And I wrote the first few verses, but there's only so much that you can, you can write. And with these, with these um, poems that I write, they're intuitive. I want children to be able to read what I'm writing about. If I'm writing about an anteater, I want them to know what an anteater does, yeah? Um, so with this project, I'm really, really stoked, really excited about this project because I came up with the idea, I will do the writing and the children will do the illustrations. So I'm going to write about an anteater for A and three children out of 600 are going to do three different pictures on the opposite page. Yeah, writing pictures. Then I felt so guilty because I thought it's only going to be like 84 illustrations out of 600 children in a school. So what I've come up with now because I felt bad about that, that certain, you know, a lot of children aren't going to have their opportunity. We are going to make the cover. Every, every child in the school that never got their picture in the book, they're going to have their picture on the cover. This so, is the so, front, sweet. so the front and back cover 
of Kevin Crooks, Alphabet of Animals, or whatever we come up with a title, um, written by Kevin Crooks, illustrations by Southside Elementary. Wow. Every child from that school will have their picture either in the book or on the cover. That's my next biggest, biggest um, project, and I'm so looking forward to it. Um, and that's where I am at the moment. I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm very gifted. I'm gifted by God that I can speak in rhyme. My, I didn't explain that these books have never taken more than 30 minutes to write. Wow, this is interesting. <laughs> I don't spend, I, I, I have not, I've got the attention span of a fish. If I don't write, finish what I'm writing, and I've never not finished what I'm, what, I've, what I'm writing, in 20 to 30 minutes, then it wouldn't happen, you know? Yeah. Anyway, that's it. a bit about me. I've got a few little questions here that Anna sent me that I <laughs> would love to, to answer. I hope I haven't, I hope everyone's had a nice time listening to what I do and where I go. So what do you, why do you think reading aloud is important? This book is not a Bible. This book is written by an amazing lady called Sarah Young and it's called Jesus Calling. And it has a page for every single day of the year. I was given this book by such a dear friend, Stavina, who is also a poet. And I read this book aloud, every page, every single day, 365 days of the year. I am now on my third year of reading this book. Wow. Why is it important to read aloud? When you read aloud, You've got the expression, you've got the feeling, you've got the passion. Intonation. That's what, that's what reading aloud is about. I could sit here and read my books quietly to myself, but I get a real buzz from reading my books to children, putting the expression, putting the feeling into it, explaining about Huxton only coming out at night, Explain about Mio, Mio and the predators. I can, I can express how dangerous it is. Mio's come out. And there's an eagle trying to get to him. Snoff, I can express how Snoff lollops through the trees. Reading aloud gives you expression. And, it and emotion. Yeah. yeah, and it puts passion into what you've written. So that's my, that's my answer for, for that one. What are, where are your favourite book authors? Julia Donaldson wrote The Gruffalo. <gasps> I don't know if everyone's Amazing. heard of Gruffalo. Oh, I've got a toy. I've got two books and I've got three books actually on Gruffalo. Let and me, let me just... A toy. Oh, yes, I've got this one in English. The Gruffalo Beautiful. is written by Julia Donaldson, who I've spoken to, lovely lady. Oh, so and jealous. It... <laughs> It, it, it is me. It is, it is it's Snoff. Now, I didn't copy her. Not at all. Didn't copy, copy her, but we write so similarly. So similarly. It, so, such the same. Um, yeah, the Gruffalo. So, what, what are, where are your favourite book authors? Sarah Young, obviously, for the religious side and the reading aloud side. Julia Donaldson for the Gruffalo, amazing book. And the Gruffalo's Child is just as good. Yes. I love yes. watching them. I agree. <laughs> There's videos and I love sitting there and watching videos. I'm a, I'm a big child at heart. I think that's how I can relate to children so well. <laughs> Who inspired you or made a big impact on your writing? My children, Chloe and Ben. Wow. My daughter, Chloe, came up with the name Mio. Um, they, they were, they're teenagers now. And they've always given me inspiration. Lots gone on in my life. And yeah, they're the first people I will read a story to. Chloe's done lots of sessions with me around the world, which has been good because children relate to talking to children. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get too choked talking about them because they give me every little bit of inspiration I ever need. 
What are your tips for good writing? Write about something you like. Don't write about something that does not give you inspiration. If you like football, write about football. If you like ballerie, ballet, if you like anything, ice skating, if you're passionate about what you write, it's going to be good. I love writing about animals. Writing an A to Z of animals is, is, oh, it's brilliant for me because I love writing about animals. If I was told I, I can write about anything and I've been given lots of tests and by different people and I've always managed to impress them with what I do. But if you're passionate about the subject you're writing about, that's the best tip I could give anyone. Amazing, amazing tip. Just, I, I'm speechless. This is incredible one. What does it mean to be an author and a poet? <laughs> yeah, that's just For me, out. <laughs> what does it mean to me? I'm not rich and I'm not famous. I've traveled the world virtually. I've spoken to thousands of children, hundreds of teachers. I've entertained and I've given inspiration. And that means the world to me. I'm so glad that I found a talent that I can do and I can do easily where I can help children, entertain children, make them smile and make them love. And empower them because you, you, do, you, you are doing this right now. <laughs> uh, that, that, yeah. That's what being an author and poet. Of course, I'd like to be um, JK Rowling, Joe. I spoke to her as well, but we mustn't say that. Um, I'd like to be rich and famous through my writing. Then I wouldn't have to go to work. I could sit at home and write and write and write. But this not happened to me. Maybe one day, maybe not. But I don't need to be rich and famous when I can entertain children. And I've got some lovely, lovely letters. I've had some wonderful emails, some amazing thank yous. Wow. You know, I've had one little girl came back, for instance, saying, you've given me such an inspiration. I'm going to write and write and write. Things like that. Yeah. That, that, that's amazing. That, that's, what make, that, that, that's what being an author... We will make you with. rich and famous. Don't worry. We will make no, it happen. No, no. <laughs> you deserve it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, that's question five. The, if there's anything else anyone wants me to answer, then please feel free and ask away. Yeah, so um, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment uh, area over here. Also, I'm going to touch the link. I'm going to publish the video live uh, online, I mean. And then um, I'm going to add the link to this collection where everything is going to be saved. Uh, as a reflection space, I'm going to, I have already sent this collection to you, but it's, it's going to be like a sweet memories of um, you being here, we, we really, that's, that's what I wanted to hear from you. This insights on the questions that I dropped about the why reading, reading aloud is important. I, I have looked through some articles, of course, but you just brought it in a, your way, in your perspective, which is absolutely unique and incredible. This is like the highlight of my day and the highlight of the year when we, we talk about word read aloud day, since it's like tomorrow. Um, and that's that, that uh, you made my day already, so I'm I don't have any questions. But if anyone has any questions related to our session today, to our amazing guest and incredible, you're super, just I want to share it because otherwise, I don't know when just uh, typing your in private message. Okay, you're super generous and passionate and amazing person, and I wish you to okay, you're doing you did already, you've done so many great impactful sessions with children and um i when i'm speechless admit that i am so overwhelmed <laughs> with the all positivity that you brought with with the insights with the passion that i love fashion educators i i run this i'm writing this uh, community of fashion teachers teachers love it this is all about people like you are that's this, incredible this is what it's all about oh entertaining them children no one forced them to do that I yeah. always finish the session by going. Let's do it. Let's take a selfie. If you would like to, uh, okay, I'm going to, um, okay, let's do it. One, two, three. <laughs>